Okay, so let's take a look at this. <clears throat> and what I want to do here is I want to flesh out a little bit better kind of why this whole um, thing becomes uh, what we talked about, big O of N. Because in the slides, this is represented as C times N, right? Um, but in actuality, this C, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit different. And so uh, this is kind of a simplified way, okay, of representing this. Uh, because in the slides, it just it doesn't need to flesh it out completely. But So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this loop, and we're going to find out what the actual time complexity is, okay? Because take a look at this. Like, this line has some amount of time that it takes, and, and, and this initialization step. And this does two, and this does two, and this does two. And they're all different, right? An assignment here, like right here, this assignment, is going to take a different amount of time than checking if i is less than or equal to n, right? And that's going to take a different amount of time than this, which is an assignment plus an arithmetic. It's i plus 1, and I'm taking that value and assigning it back to i. And same thing with here. This is an assignment plus an arithmetic. Now, likely, these two right here are going to take a similar amount of time, but just to be safe, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, label these um, these different tasks with some type of constant time, okay? So it's going to take C1 to do an assignment, for example. It's going to take C2 for this check, C3, and then this will represent as C4, okay? Now, we don't know what these values are. It could be one clock cycle. It could be two or three. It could be we don't know, okay? Uh, but we do know that Every time that we add 5 to k and assign that value back to k, it takes the same amount of time. It takes the same amount of clock cycles because it's the same task. Okay? All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add all this up. And what we're going to do at the end is we're still going to use the tools for the big O notation. We're still going to use the same tools about uh, ignoring those constant, the constants that we multiplied our function by. And we're going to ignore... Uh, non-dominating terms, right? Anything that's not growing as fast as something else. Okay, so let's take a look at what this all adds up to. So let's go item by item, okay? Now, if I, so, so this first one, let's look at C1. C1 times however long it takes, or however many times we're going to do the C1 task. How many times are we going to do the C1 task? I'm hoping that the first thing that came to your mind is once. We're only going to assign the value of 1 to i one time. Right? We never go back and do it again. Right? It's just that first time, first time through the loop, times 1. Okay. Plus C2 times... How many times are we going to do the C2 task? Well, let's look at some examples. If n is 1, okay, if n is 1, okay, if n is 1, then we checked i is less than or equal to 1. True, we do the loop. Then we add 1 to i. And we go back and we check again. So we actually check twice. So if n is 1, we check twice. If n is 2, we check once for 1, once for 2, once for 3. Oh, and then we bop out. So if n is 2, we check it three times. If n is, let's take it. Well, what about if n was 0? If n was 0, we check 1 is less than or equal to 0. We don't do the loop, but we did do the check. Okay? So we did the check one time. Do you see the trend here? For every n, the number of times we did the C2 task was n plus 1. Okay? Let me get my eraser over here so I can go back. Okay, so now, what about, what about the C3 task? Okay? Well, the C3 task, we're going to do 
how many times? Well, we do it every time we execute the loop, right? Because if n was zero, this was then the test. If n was zero, then the test was false and we don't even do the loop. We never do this at all. If n was one, we do the check, we do the loop, we do the i plus plus, then this is false and we back out of the loop. If n was two, we do the check once, we do the check, we do the i plus plus once, we do the check twice, we do the i plus plus twice, we do the check a third time, it's now false, and we hop out. So we do it two times. Do you see the trend here? Okay, so for C3, we do it n times. Also note that it, if we were to use the, uh, represent this for loop as a while loop, this task would simply be the last thing we did inside the loop. What that means is that this line is inside the loop just like this one is, which means that C4 is also going to be done in the same way that this one is. Okay. Okay, so what do we have? Okay, so let's see what this is. So let's take all of our n terms out. So we have c2 plus c3 plus c4 times n plus c1 plus c2. If I did my algebra correct, right? Okay, so what, what do we have here? All right, these, we get rid of those, right? Those are non-dominating terms. We get rid of that. This is a multiplicative constant. We get rid of that, All right? And what are we left with? Big O of N, all right? Okay, so see, the, it is a little bit more um, complex than the slides represent, but I do want you to see that it still comes out to the same idea because it's not just some c times n, because th that's not what this function actually is. There is some constant stuff going on that's only one time or one extra time, right? But it still comes out to the same thing. It's still the matter of that as n grows, when n is very small, like 0, 1, 2, then this becomes, it impacts it more. But as n starts growing to be very, very large, like if we do this a thousand times, for example, right, then the single time we initialized i is minimal. It doesn't really affect our overall runtime nearly as much as these other things that we have to do multiple times. Right, so n it becomes the thing that dominates how long this algorithm is going to take. Okay. I hope this has cleared uh, up some things. I hope this is helpful to you to understand uh, why why we use this whole big O notation and why it's important. Okay, thank you for listening and um, have a good weekend.